sponsored by Winwing Technologies, replicates the real Viper's mechanical movement with full metal construction. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today is the 15th of April 2022. On the 13th of April, the Russian Slava class cruiser, the Moskva, was damaged in the Black Sea. It was then towed, we think, towards Sevastopol and it sunk yesterday on the 14th. This is such a big event and so relevant to Grim Reapers that we have to cover it as best we can. We'll do our best to be respectful. We're going to completely remove the geopolitics from the situation. That is not what we're interested in. We just want the engineering and the machinery. For me, it was a real shock. And it's quite sad in a way because the Slava cruisers, of which three were completed. Obviously, this is sunk, so there's now two remaining. I always revered them, saw them as almost invincible unsinkable because of their massive defensive power so to think that they could now be sunk by relatively small forces and we'll talk about that in a bit just came to me as a massive shock and a bit of a disappointment i would say so let's talk about the theories of how it could have been sunk officially from the russian authorities it was a fire on board and the fire became catastrophic and it ended up sinking so could an accidental fire have started out due to, for instance, equipment failure? Absolutely. These are very old ships. They're over 40 years old. And there is precedent for old Soviet-era ships catching fire and burning and nearly sinking, obviously. It happened to the Kuznetsov and possibly others. Yes, it's possible. Could the fire itself sink a ship? Well, yeah, if it reached the magazine and started popping off explosives in the magazine, the whole ship would almost certainly go up and it very possibly could sink. It's assuming, of course, that the fire control couldn't deal with the fire. Could the fire have been started on purpose by arson? I don't see why not. Very possible. But the Ukrainian authorities say something very different. They say that they sunk the Moskva with a couple of Neptune anti-ship missiles. And this, of course, is possible. Could a single or maybe two anti-ship subsonic cruise missiles sink a 12,000 ton cruiser if they impacted on it? The answer is yes, or well, the answer is maybe. If it hit the magazine or near the magazine, almost certainly would ignite the magazine and the ship would detonate and probably sink. If one or two missiles hit elsewhere on the ship, then it would start a fire, obviously, and it then depends whether the crew and the fire control could deal with the blaze or not. And that is almost unpredictable. There is just so many parameters that would need to be calculated in whether that fire would spread or not. But just to show you how dangerous fire is to combat vessels and really any vessel on the sea, we go back to 1982 and the British destroyers and how many were damaged and sunk by fire, even in some cases with Exocet uh, subsonic cruise missiles hitting, but not detonating, but just the impact of the hit and the uh, excess fuel igniting and the fire spreading and destroying the ships. Fire really is the Achilles heel of these vessels. So it depends where it hit in the ship and it depends how well the damage control could deal with the fire. So with that, let's start simulating. We're going to do a progressive experimental simulation on our simulated DCS here, which is pretty decent. What I'm really looking at is not the damage that the missile can do to the ship if it hits, because that is not very well modelled in game, it's just very simple. This ship has some hit points and if the missile hits the ship, some of those hit points are removed and once it gets down to zero hit points, it sinks. That's obviously not like real life. Like I said, real life is really just rolling a dice. Where the missile hits, how well the damage control can deal with the fire. That bit's not simulated. So what I'm looking more at is if the ship was really sunk by Neptune missiles, how could those Neptune missiles have got through the defences of the ship? Like I said at the beginning, this ship I've revered because I've seen it as nearly immortal. It's got so many defensive systems that nothing should really be able to sink it until you get into really big forces. Obviously, if you had a Nimitz-class carrier group come in, it would blow it out of the water. But we don't have a Nimitz-class carrier group. We've got very small forces opposing this Moskva in the Black Sea. I should say this is the only cruiser or was the only lava cruiser in the Black Sea. Now there are none, and none will come in because, of course, Turkey has closed the channels. So how could these Neptune missiles have got to the ship? Like I said, progressive experiment. First, 
We're going to launch one KH35. KH35 is what the Neptune is built on. It's basically, well, it is a modified KH35. That's what it is. So we've got a pretty decent analog. I should say we are in a correct location as the last known position of the cruiser before it was hit on the 13th. Where the missiles are launched from, we've got no idea. I've just assumed here because it's the closest point south of Odessa here, 32 nautical miles. Well within range, I'd just say, of a Neptune system. Stage one, we will launch one Neptune analog missile. And out of interest, we'll also launch one American Harpoon. The Neptune or the KH-35 is roughly the equivalent of the American AGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship cruise missile. About the same warhead, about the same speed, both subsonic cruise missiles. We'll start the weather as a perfectly sunny, decent day with no wind. Obviously, there was a storm on the day, and we will simulate that later as we bring in the progression. So let's look at the defensive systems of the Slava-class cruiser. It was designed and manufactured over, well, actually quite a long period of time due to problems with its missiles in the 70s and 80s, and the three that were completed until the 13th were still sailing. They were based around 16 supersonic missiles here. The design ethos of this was to counter, of course, the Nimitz-class carrier group from the US. And this was designed to puncture a big hole in that carrier group. These are offensive weapons only, not defensive. In terms of defensive, we start with the forts. S-300F, similar to the PS Grumble ground-based site. They are long-range, VLS-launched anti-air missiles. They can shoot down other missiles, and they can shoot down aircraft. There are 64 of them. They are very potent, very roughly similar to the Pac-2 American Patriot system. They will be able to attack a cruise missile at about, I guess, about 10 miles or about 20 miles with AWACS support. Next, for close in defense, we have low range radar guided missiles in the form of what we call OSA missiles. They're about range of about five miles. They pop out from here. They are the same type of missile as fired from the SA-8 OSA land-based vehicle. Next, the AK-130 twin-barrel radar-guided 130mm cannon. I'm not sure if it can be used for anti-missile, but it can be used for anti-air. And finally, the close-in last line of defence, the mighty AK-630s. There are six of these turrets, radar-guided Gatling guns, six barrel, 30 mil, similar to the American Seawiz. You got one there, you got one there, two amidships, which I can't see. Can anyone see them? There they are. One, two there, and then another to port. So we've got the Navy Grumbles, or the forts, 64 of them, 40 OSA type missiles, the AK 130 twin barrel, and six AK 630s. They are linked together with a three-dimensional search radar and multiple fire control radars, which have redundancies built in, and they can have radar sharing. That's why I've always considered this the Slava Cruiser, although it is quite old, nearly invincible. Okay, let's run the first simulation. Everything's in place to where we assume it would be. We've got one American AGM-84 Harpoon being launched from the air here. That's the American one. We just want to use that as an analog just to compare to the Neptune or the KH-35 and a ground launch KH-35. There it is. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the different flight profiles of them. First of all, the KH-35. It's going to cruise at about 450 knots and it's going to go down to about 50 feet. Then we've got the Harpoon. It's a similar looking missile. Note that it's going to cruise much higher. In fact, there's, there's the other, other one there. There's the H-35. But... The Harpoon's going to cruise at 1,000 feet. The Kayak's going to cruise at 50 feet. When the AGM-84... Uh, D, the Harpoon, gets within about 10 miles of the target. It uses its own radar. It will go down to about 50 feet. As well, let's see how the Moskva defends itself. Um, everything's set up and red alert, and they're ready to fire. I'm just speed forward because we can. Okay, here come. They're called Grumbles. Uh, they're very similar. Uh, technically fought, but yeah, they are Grumbles as well. It's these guys here launching with the VLS. You can see the VLS tubes open. It can fire multiple at once, and it can track, I think, the fort six targets at a time. And that is different directions as well. Uh, it's only putting two out because there's only two missiles. Uh, oh, one's disappeared. If it finds it loses its solution, it will detonate. There we go. There's the 35 and there's the 84. 
And that is going to be a dead harpoon. Boom. So why is it targeted the harpoon and not the kayak? Well, that is because of line of sight. This guy is uh, 20 miles out or something like that, but it's low. And the earth is actually curved. He can't see that, but he could see the harpoon. So the harpoon flies high, it will get shot down. The kayak, not so much. That said, the fort should be able to attack the kayak when it comes over the Earth's curvature, which will be uh, about seven or eight miles, something like that. So let's scroll forward. I'll put a measurement tape out so you can see we're at. Uh, the nautical miles, not miles, slightly longer than statute miles. 11. I personally would have expected the forts to start firing now as this comes over the horizon, which it will be over the horizon now, but it's not. Remember, conditions are perfect. Uh, the sun's out and there is no wind. He may simply be programmed to not use the forts up because they're very valuable, expensive missiles. Okay, at this point, the Oses are fired. These are the close-range weapons, range about five miles, something like that. Much more accurate than the forts, much smaller warheads, much cheaper, and just much more efficient. And they should deal with the threat, let's see. That should be a dead KH-35. Boom. Oh, oh maybe not. Oh, wow, got through. How about that? He got through two Oses. Okay, well, there's plenty of distance left. There's three miles, and this thing only travels at 400 knots, so... Is Moskva going to fire again? If not, this is going to be a very short video. Tally. Fire control. There we go. We've got an arm launch. I just paused there. These are what we call twin rail arm launchers. They pop out of here and shoot. It's kind of a transformery and cool looking. Right, let's see if they get here. I said probability of kill increases as the range decreases. Boom! Taken down. Okay, so what we found there, it can intercept Harpoon at long range. It can not intercept KH-35 at long range. It can at close range. Next, Ukraine claimed to have hit it with two missiles. I don't know how many it launched. It could have launched eight, 16. I have absolutely no idea, but let's go with two. Otherwise, in good weather conditions. Uh, let's just speed that along. Ping, out they come. KH-35s, they'll get down to 50 feet pretty quickly. They already are, and 450 knots. Uh, they're long-range, jet-fueled, uh, jet-powered missiles that can go for about 70 nautical miles, roughly. The fact that they're traveling so low, and this guy's not going to use the forts, is a major Achilles heel in the uh, Moskva design that we've already found today. I didn't even know it wouldn't use the forts. I thought it would. I mean, that's its first line of defense. Nine miles, six miles... I'm not expecting these to get through. Like I said, there are multiple redundancy fire control radars and whatnot. And the ship, it should be able to shoot these down. Boom, one down. Don't worry about the smoke, it will not affect the radars. Or not substantially. It's getting close. Ose is out. Good, a good PK. Probability of kill. Sea is out. Wow, look at that. Didn't expect it to get this close. Oh, it almost got through, guys. Wow. Okay. So the second one got through the Osas. Don't know how, it just did. And it got through to the Sea Wiz, the AK-630. But it still was shot down. Uh, at this point, I think the thing to do next, guys, is to start adding some weather and see how it affects us. So I'll just show you affecting the weather so you can see that I'm not cheating or being... In weird, so I'm going to take the weather here. I'm going to go 30 knots of wind. 30 knots, it's not a huge storm. Um, I'm going to just turn on rain and, and uh, drizzle. Ping, ping. Otherwise, let's just run it immediately. Uh, two land launch Neptunes again. Moderate storm, 30 knot wind. There's our kayaks out. I should say that is the uh, NATO reporting name. Skip forward to about 7 miles where the Osa start coming out. Maybe 6 miles. Okay, more swell, more waves. I'm surprised it's not actually raining it's not yes it is it is raining coming in on a bit of a strange aspect i know speed up for the osas turning in terminal phase where's his brother there he is now this is very interesting the osas are not firing we've introduced rain and a 30 knot wind, and the Osas are not firing. Also, the ship doesn't even appear to be moving this time. I don't know why. It should do. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Osas are not firing. AK 630 out. One down. Ah. Look at the. Right in the magazine. That's the first time we've run that, by the way. 
hit. Moskva hit. Moskva sunk. Wow. What on earth happened there? The Osas don't fire in a storm. I'm not dreaming, am I, guys? The Osas do not fire in a storm. No. Why no, no is that? Out. Now, here's the thing. The plane, the, uh, I could imagine if it was a massive storm, but it's not. The roll on the ship is minimal. Uh, bank angle doesn't tell me, but there is not much roll. And it's not a huge swell. A re uh, Moscow should be able to cope with that, and it should be able to use its defensive weapons. But it can't. In the sim, if I put this rain on, and I put 30 knot wind on, like, like I said, it isn't massive. Osas will not fire. Like I said, the damage is not modeled properly in the sim. It's a basic hit point thing. But if that was real, and that missile hit on the magazine, the whole thing would go up. Boom. Uh, we actually thought we would have to do more work, much more work, to sink this. Uh, wow, look, the forts got ready, but they never fired. We thought we were going to have to do much more work to sink the Moskva, but all we had to do in the end was fire two missiles, like, apparently, Ukraine said they fired, and we put a 30-knot wind on. You can go and try this at home to see that we're not cheating. We set the carrier on cruise 60 knots. We set the rain going, and the fire control radars do not work, and the OSAs, which are there, they're, they're raised, but they do not fire cannot be fired in this weather. So the ship that I thought was invincible can't fire when it rains. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I really don't know what to think about that, guys, and find that a bit stunning. What do you guys think about that? I think it's ridiculous that a Navy gets defeated by water. Fair weather Navy. And it's amazing. It's, here's the thing, though. Russia is used to bad weather. It operates in the Baltic... Its main seas are the Black Sea and the Baltic Sea, both of which have pretty terrible weather, I, hope, I think you'd agree. And even simulate in-game the Osas won't fire. It main, its main close range defense do not fire in the in the bad weather. And look at it. Look at the ship move. It's not rolling a lot and it's not pitching a lot. That is perfectly moderate for a ship, uh, even a twelve thousand ton cruiser. That's pretty moderate. So we didn't even have to get onto. We were going to start talking about crew in, in inefficiencies. Uh, we were going to talk about you know what if crew morale was bad, what if crew training was bad. But we don't need to. We just need to put a bit of bad weather on. There's a argument to say that uh, crew training was. A problem but in any either way whether or not the there was an accident on board or whether it actually got struck uh, we clearly saw there was a, a issue with uh, damage control yeah right because even when the missile hit they should have been I say the value stream viewers are asking how do we know the game is accurate we don't we don't know the game is accurate we're just running with what we've got that's all I can show you I'm not an able expert most, none of us are I should say most likely it isn't accurate it is yeah, convenient. It is convenient, though, isn't it, guys? Only thing I can think is that maybe DCS is modeling the sea state as changes in altitude, and most of the missiles have a hard-coded, will not be fired below this altitude kind of thing. So are you saying it's changing the effective altitude of the missile? Due yeah. To swell. Yeah, but I'm not sure if that's modeled. That that'd be kind of cool if it is, but. Well, something's modeled in there, isn't it? Because all I've changed yeah. is the wave height and put some rain on. I'd be and curious to run the test without the rain. Okay, we're going to run... So yeah, 30 knots, but 30 knots of wind, but... So, what we're going to do now is turn perfect weather on, but have the same swell. This will be interesting. So, no atmospheric condition, but just having the water on. Uh, let us know your thoughts, obviously, valued viewers, about what you think is going on. But wouldn't it be funny if that is realistic and that's what happened? Wouldn't that be crazy? No, you couldn't have that. You couldn't have a cruiser that couldn't fire okay well just, just like our b2s um yeah. not being able to yeah. be out in uh, in weather yeah you know? there, is, there is president isn't there guys there is president right here we go six miles no atmospherics but the swell is high i should say these waves look small but they're not small <laughs> they're 20 foot waves probably more maybe 30 maybe 40 foot waves yep same thing guys no osa osa will not fire when the sea swell is high yeah, so I think it's because um, there's a little clock essentially that runs when it acquires before it'll fire, and I think the waves are resetting the clock. Roger. It didn't get through that time. The AK 630s shot it down. Um, whether the AK 630 shoots it down or not is potluck. Is whether a bullet happens to hit the missile or not, and that is just that is just rolling a dice at that point. Are those radar guided guns? They are radar guided guns. But they don't have a minimum altitude. I'm no, they'll fire, they'll fire at yeah. anything, at, they'll fire at a speedboat. Um, so what we've proved there, Cortana, is still the Osas will not fire. Are they on their arms? Yeah, they're on their arms. They're out and ready, but they couldn't fire because of the swell. Yeah, so that'd just be a hard-coded thing in DCS more than likely. But uh, I, I don't, you know, honestly, you'd have to ask somebody who is more right. familiar with naval stuff as to whether or not that'd be something that... 
Right, so we would actually be a problem. We've demonstrated something interesting, at least. What we need now is a naval expert that knows these systems inside out to tell us whether that is how it would work in real life. Would the swell destroy the ability for the missiles to be launched? I just wanted to show you because it looked like those waves were small. Uh, waves always do if you've got no reference. But this is a this is a twelve thousand ton cruiser. It's extremely big. A man looks very small on that. Look how big these waves are. Look at that. Now, radar, I'm right in saying the radar wouldn't go through that wave. Is that right, guys? I don't think it would. Or it would mess, it up, mess up fire control radar trying to go through that wave, right? I think it would. I think yes, it would act pretty awesome. similar to the ground. It's essentially impenetrable. And look how big that, that is. And it's going to mess. It's going to bounce that signal about. Wow, look how big it is, guys. That's incredibly interesting, guys. We're going to open, a big, open up a big old can of worms here, guys. The Valley View has been asked, can land-based... OSA's launched in the 30 knot wind. Yes, they can. I definitely tried that. So it is definitely a sea thing and it's definitely related to the swell. Right, that's the best we can show you, Valley viewers, as our sim will model it. I hope you find that interesting. Anyway, I certainly did. The main Grim Reapers videos are now being split between this YouTube channel and the Grim Reapers 2 YouTube channel. So if you want to see all of the Grim Reapers videos, please consider subscribing to both channels. And thank you for watching.